Welcome to Cycle Talk. In this episode, we've got the Yamaha MT-07 Tracer on test. We check out new tyres from Avon for adventure and road use. We fit some really cool accessories and do some servicing on a YZ250F. We check out a really cool custom, but first, there's news with From the Apex. The Sydney Motorcycle Show is back in 2017, and this year it'll be back at Piermont at the brand new Sydney International uh, Exhibition Centre. It's had the last couple of years out at Homebush because they knocked the old uh, Darling Harbour venue down and built a new one. So hopefully this year we'll have Honda back and KDM, and that's been uh, hinted at by Tony Webber, the boss of the FCAI, which basically has control over the event. Now Honda has sort of turned up at some of these events with its racing team and whatever, but hopefully this year they'll have all those new models on display. And KDM, well they've moved their operations from Perth over to Sydney, so maybe it's just going to be a little bit easier for them to uh, turn up with a big display. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Sydney Motorcycle Show always has uh, a few surprises in, in store and we always really enjoy it. So get down to, uh, to Piermont in November and check out all the 2018 machines. MV Augusta, which has got a tagline of motorcycle art, is now teasing us with this new video. MV's been building some very special machines, uh, but this particular one, the RVS, which, uh, I'll have to read this, Reparto Vecoli Speciali, or Special Vehicle Operations Project, looks pretty interesting, although as you, as you already know, we can only see the silhouette. So keep an eye on cycletalk.com.au for more information as it comes to hand. This October, MotoGP returns to Phillip Island, and Ducati has its Champions Club running again. They've moved it to turn four this year, which is the, the right hand hairpin. And so from there, you can see the action all the way from Southern Loop, all the way through to Siberia, which is the bulk of the corners at the track. And of course, they'll have screens to show the rest of the track around there. Now you get beer, wine, soft drinks, food, uh, everything laid on. You get the ticket for the whole three days of the event. There's undercover areas for if the weather's no good. And it's a really, really good way to enjoy MotoGP. A ticket to the Ducati Champions Club will set you back $1,095 and you'll find more information on Ducati's website. John McGuinness is out of the Isle of Man CT after crashing at the Northwest 200 and breaking legs, vertebrae and ribs. It opens the door for Guy Martin to pull off his first win, the perennial bridesmaid finishing second many times. But he'll be up against the likes of the Norton mounted David Johnson and Josh Brooks, and they're both Aussies. But I think the Poms will go nuts if some Antipodeans pull off a victory on a British bike. But really, it's probably going to go to Michael Dunlop or maybe Kiwi Bruce Anstey. Either way, Isle of Man looks like it's been a lot of fun this year. 2006 MotoGP champion Nicky Hayden has been badly injured in a cycling accident in Italy. While training for the World Superbike Championship, where he still rides for Honda, he collided with a car, suffering head and chest injuries. He's been transferred to hospital and at this stage is uh, being assessed for surgery. And it's very fresh news, so we don't really know the outcome of all this. Check the Cycle Talk website for updates. If you're watching this episode on Aurora or you're watching it as soon as it's gone up on Facebook or YouTube, you can join me at 9pm for a Facebook Live Q&A where you can ask me any question about motorcycling or the episode and we'll give away some copies of Eyes Wide Open, our DVD that we made about, the, uh, about Chris and Alex Pickett racing at the Isle of Man. So jump on to Facebook straight after the episode and win a copy of Eyes Wide Open. The winners of last week's DVD, Roger Murphitt, James Williams and Jeremy Towers. They say all good things must come to an end and this is the last episode of this series of Cycle Talk TV. We're already planning the next series, and if you sign up for our newsletter at cycletalk.com.au, you'll be informed about when it's going to be on. 
While you're on that website, you can also catch our old episodes and there's also links to our YouTube channel, which has 300 motorcycling videos on it. You can follow us on Facebook where we post news most days and also you can follow us on Instagram. Hope you've enjoyed this series of Cycle Talk. Go to your local bike shop and get the printed edition every second month or download the monthly one to your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device or just read it online and that's out every month. This bike test is brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. I'm out here on the Yamaha MT-07 Tracer. I've brought this bike out for a bit of a country jaunt because it's the first touring bike in, in a Lambs approved guise from Yamaha for a while, if not ever, and one of very few that really fall into that category of a proper touring bike that is Luna approved. Now, when I say a proper touring bike, what I mean is it's got some weather protection standard uh, in the form of the handguards, the fairing, and it's also got luggage. There's also lots of engine cases and driving lights and even a, a, a GPS or mobile phone holder up the front here. Now, as a touring bike, uh, it's very comfortable. You sit up fairly straight, lean slightly forward onto the handlebars, which gives you a good view of the road ahead. This one's got a big screen on it. There's a big touring screen which is adjustable. I found that screen to be really good. If you're under six foot tall, you'll probably find it even better. Now, performance wise, you've got a, a twin cylinder engine down there that's about 650 cc's. It provides good performance, you know, right up past the uh, past freeway speeds. I was surprised at how quickly it accelerates. It goes through traffic really, really well, and yet it's still learner approved. Now, of course, a lot of that's based on powder weight, and it's not a lightweight bike as far as learner bikes are concerned, but it is fairly light. Um, it's one of the lightest touring bikes that you'll find anywhere. So it, it, it hits that really nice compromise. It's not probably not too heavy for almost anybody, um, but it's still a touring bike. And, and as I say, it's hard to find a touring bike that fits into that guise. Now this particular model has been um, heavily accessorized by, by Yamaha. They've added a lot of the, the bling you see here, including a set of uh, Continental off-road tires, which are more designed for adventure bikes. Now, will that turn this into an adventure bike? No, it won't. But what Yamaha is saying by putting those tyres on is that this bike can be taken across dirt roads and it can be a bit more of a tourer uh, in, in dodgy conditions than a lot of tourers and a lot of learner bikes, which, which only come with road bike tyres. Now, I'd probably go for something a little bit more road touring oriented, uh, a little bit more uh, less dirt oriented but by using these tyres, Yamaha's made a statement to say, hey, you can take this bike off-road. It's still a road bike, so it's very comfortable on the freeway, surprisingly so. I found myself doing uh, a little bit over the speed limit at one stage without realising it, which is not something that usually happens with a, with a Lunar approved machine. Normally they get a bit breathless at that um, over the 110, but uh, Yamaha's done a great job of making the MT-07 Tracer feel quite comfortable at that speed. So I've run into a few people who've said, oh, it would have been great if it was the full power model. But I, I disagree. I, I think if you want the full power model, you probably go for the MT-09 Tracer anyway. Um, which might be a bit bigger and heavier and a little bit more expensive, but overall, for the more experienced rider looking for that extra performance, the MT09 Trace is going to be a better bike. This bike is for someone who doesn't 
necessarily either care about having that extra performance, wants to save a few dollars, or is on a learner, uh, a learner license and hasn't got that experience. If you fall into that category where you want something that's primarily a road bike but isn't afraid of dirt roads, that can carry luggage, can carry you on a longer trip in comfort with some weather protection and take some gear with you, well, the MT-07 uh, Tracer here, pretty good choice, I think, and not many other things competing with it. Definitely worth a look and definitely worth a test ride. This feature brought to you by Avon Tyres. Now you've just seen me plenty of times on here before talking about the newest bikes, flashest bikes and all the latest things going on. But we're here today with my bike. Now I've got a 2014 Yamaha YZ250F. Time for some maintenance, also want to put a few bits and pieces on there to add a bit of protection to the bike. We've got a range of parts here, air filter on a dirt bike. It's time for an oil change, Yamalube kit, everything you need's in there. Case saver, just to stop the chain if something does happen going through your engine. I'm also up for some new brake pads. I've spoiled myself big time. We've got this Acropobic exhaust straight out of the GYTR catalogue. Also, got some radiator braces and a skid plate. This is big on the track as well. Stops anything going up and damaging your cases, damaging a bolt, oil everywhere. Now, most of you dirt bike guys are gonna be pretty familiar with changing a set of brake pads. Brake pads brake should pads slide, slide out, out, no worries. Time for the new ones. Pin secured, brake pads are in and they're located in place. And all important, make sure you pump that front brake up because we've just pushed the pistons out. Another all important maintenance activity is changing your air filter. On a dirt bike, you need to be doing this every time you ride it, okay? Once it gets dirty, at the end of the ride, take it out, clean it, all the rest of that sort of stuff. Also check down here inside the air boot, this section can get quite full of dirt at times, so make sure that that is nice and clean before you put the air filter back in. This here is our GYTR dual stage air filter. Very important, dual stage, two stages. We've pre-oiled it so it's all ready to go. Make sure you oil them properly. Locate the filter in place. Remember not to over tighten the screws too much. And then we can put the covers back on and we're all done. So now we're ready to fit up the new exhaust pipe. Pretty excited about getting a new pipe on my bike. No changes required to the bike either. New fuel injected bikes means it's super easy. Slip the pipe on, start it up and away we go. The rest will sort itself out. Couple of new bushes here. Now we've got a long bush and a short bush. It's important to put the long one on the same side that the wheel goes. That way, when we fit it all up, the wheel doesn't scrape on the side of the exhaust pipe when we go riding. Next of all, we're gonna put some radiator braces on. We've got, again, we've got the GYTR radiator braces here. Looking to put these on for a bit of extra protection. YZ, WR, whatever you own, they're gonna come in really handy. WR owners, if you are riding in the bush a lot, you're gonna find them super handy if you're bouncing off trees and that sort of stuff. Now look, I can't stress enough, when you're doing a job like this that has a left side and a right side, do one at a time. That's how to safely protect your Yamaha YZ250F, WR250F. That's how to protect the radiators and how to fit them up. So one of the most important things you can do in your own garage on your bike is change your own oil. So maintenance, you've got to do it on these modern day four strokes. Change your oil every sort of seven to 10 hours. Some people might say less, but I do mine sort of in that window. Again, you can do it yourself. It's cheap and easy. Oil's pretty readily available. We're using Yamalube. We've got a kit here, it's easy, convenient, easy to get hold of. The Yamaha kits come ready to go, so you've got an oil filter, O-ring, all that sort of stuff's included. We're gonna use that today, but as well as that, I've got a new skid plate we're gonna put on the bike. 
GYTR, nice bit of protection underneath the motor there. Stop any rocks and things flying up and damaging the cases. So we're also going to do that. Now, last thing, we haven't mentioned it up until now, but this here is an owner's manual. Now, any other Australian male like me, you've probably never read an instructions manual in your life, but they're pretty handy. So in here, it does tell you how to do an oil change, how to do a brake pad change, how to do all that sort of basic stuff. Check it out. It's worth having a look at, worth having a read. If nothing else, it tells you the right amount of oil to put in your bike, torque specs, all those kinds of things. But do yourself a favor and have a look. That way you get the job done properly. So we're gonna be referencing the Yamaha manual when we do all this, this work. Um, handy, check it out. So on the YZ250F, underneath the engine at the back here is where our drain plug is located. Spanner, we're gonna back that one off, like so. Now don't forget, undo your filler cap. That way it allows all the air to go down into the engine. That way you don't get an airlock when you're trying to drain your oil. So we're gonna drain the oil out into this little bucket here. Now when you're doing an oil change, it also is important that you start the bike up beforehand and actually warm it up a little bit. Let's the oil turn over in the engine and collect any debris that is laying around in the bottom of the cases. While we're here, again, on the Yamaha, there's a small strain plug under here. We're gonna undo that. Now our strainer plug there, it's nice and clean, no debris inside, but I'm gonna give it a quick clean out anyway. Check for debris inside there. Make sure you give it a good wash. Be careful not to over tighten. Included in an oil change kit. Remove the copper washer, fit on a new one. That there really helps seal up the bolt against the cases. That way you make sure you don't have any oil leaks. So slip on a new copper washer when you go to put the drain plug back in once the oil's drained. And that should seal it up. Next item is to change the oil filter. Again, on the Yamaha, it's located on the right hand side on the cases. Have a look at your manual and you'll be able to find all the information you need. Two bolts. And there's our old air oil filter. We're gonna put that one down. Again, we've got a new one. We're also gonna replace the O-ring here. So the O-ring goes around the lip here of our oil filter cover. It's important when you put the oil filter in, put it in the right direction. One side's blank, one side's open. Open side in, blank to the front. It's also got a little rubber coating there. Again, make sure you get it in the right way around. Slip your cover back on. Like I said, we've just put a new O-ring in ours. You should do as well. That's your oil filter, all changed. Of course, don't forget to put the fresh engine oil in. On this side of the engine here, where you've got your drain plug and your fill plug, you've also got this sight glass. Once you're done, don't forget to turn the bike up straight and check your sight glass. Now ours looks over full at the moment. That's because with an oil filter replacement, the oil hasn't had a chance to go to the oil filter yet. So once we start the bike up, you'll see that drop, check it periodically, warm the bike up, see where the level's at if need to, top it up, but you should be filling it up with the right amount to start with. Again, check out your manual, it'll tell you the full amount. Like we said at the start, I'm also gonna fit up this skid plate. Again, nice protection against your engine. Been wanting one of these for a little while, so we'll go ahead and fit this up. Underneath your engine, slides up, slides into place. Be worth noting too that I do have this case saver on here. Now this case saver covers your radiator hoses. On some bikes it is known that dirt can come up, rocks can come up and bust the hoses. So I've got this extra guard in place. It is genuine Yamaha, again, GYTR. The new skid plate's just gonna fit right around that. All done, now we're fully protected underneath the motor. No more have to worry about rocks, sticks, or anything coming up to damage it. Everything we've used today is gonna be available through the Y shop, okay? You can go to your local Yamaha dealer. They'll be able to supply you with everything we've got today, including this big flash pipe. If you've got any questions, send them through. Keep on top of your maintenance, keep your bike protected, and you'll be good to keep your bike for as long as I have. Avon has sent us some new tyres that are versatile. So we've got the Trail Rider here, which is designed for 90% road and 10% dirt. And this more, more recent release, the, the Trek Rider, 
is a 50% dirt, 50% road uh, adventure bike tyre. So there's a lot of adventure bike tyres out there that are either heavily dirt oriented and tend to wear out really, really quickly and don't give great traction on bitumen. And conversely, there's some that work really, really well on the road and don't work so well on the dirt. This one, 50-50, so if you're going on a tour on a dirt, on an adventure bike, sorry, or you want to make your dirt bike uh, handle that bit better on the road sections, this could be the perfect tyre. Now it's a fairly recent release, they've got a 19 inch front and a 21 inch front and there's four different rears available and it's more for that mid-range bikes, F650s, Triumph Tigers, uh, KLR650, a lot of those sorts of models, so check them out, um, they'd be an interesting tyre to use in Australian conditions. This one here called the Trail Rider is 90% road and 10% dirt and I'm pretty excited about this tyre because I think it offers road riders in Australia the opportunity to use a lot of the dirt roads that can save you a lot of time. So you can often take a 10k dirt road and save 50k's of bitumen or you can get into places um, for the scenic, you know, take the scenic route that you wouldn't take on a road bike on a dirt road. So by having that 10% capability on the dirt, it'll give you a lot more confidence when the surf surface gets loose. Now it's available in a huge range of sizes, both for, for more um, you know, adventure bikes and dirt bikes that you, you're doing a road bike tour on, but also it's available in road bike sizes. So we're going to throw these on the Office FZ6R and we're going to try it out off-road as well. You can see that report coming up in the next coming months in Cycle Talk magazine and on the Cycle Talk website. So check that out, keep an eye on that, and we'll have a, a, a road test on the Avon Trail Riders out soon. This feature is brought to you by Speedy on Track. You had a dream, you called it inspiration, but now all you've got is boxes full of spare parts. But hang on, there's a custom bike in there just waiting, waiting for you to build it. My main inspiration was uh, bikes built by Shinya Kimura, who's a Japanese uh, bike builder, industrial designer. His bikes have always been really industrial and very engineered, and so that was my main inspiration. What I was striving for was that weird combination of sort of modern finishes like powder coats and stuff like that with the old school rusted, unfinished patina look. When I started building it, I didn't even have a 100% plan of what I wanted to, I knew what I liked, and it's sort of like organically kind of progressed to what you see now. When I designed the pipes, it was literally just endless hours of sketching on the sketch pad till I got the shape, and even when I did it, it wasn't quite as crazy as that, but Darren Millichan from DNA Customs kind of took it a little bit further than I even expected, and that's what we ended up with. The rear fender itself is actually the front fender that was extended into something to fit the rear tire. The reason it was done like that, uh, again, I took inspiration from Shinya Kimura's build, that rough, sort of unfinished look. I expected this build to last about three months max. A year and a half later, it was still probably at 80%. <laughs> the scariest part was definitely coming into a workshop and thinking that I'm way over my head in this and I've never done this before and it's pretty scary and will I ever actually see this bike on the road? To me, it's the bike that practically brought me to where I am at life right now with the community of other guys that I ride with and I share the workshop with. It kind of signifies everything in my life right now. I even met my girlfriend through the, through the group. So it all kind of ties together, which is pretty awesome. So after a year and a half, beautiful build starting with parts all in boxes scattered everywhere to create this fantastic machine. But do you think maybe there's a few leftover parts that 
Still lying around? It's custom, don't need it.